Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. In this video, we are finally going to write a program to use the port interrupts on the MSP430 Launchpad board. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. We are going to read <clears throat> from switch one, which is connected to port four bit one, which is a digital port. And we are going to set this up to be an interrupt. So instead of pulling the switch, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to set up an interrupt that every time someone presses this button, it will trigger an interrupt on the edge and we will toggle LED one. So this will have very similar functionality to the program we did where we pulled the switch, but now we're not going to pull it. We are simply going to set up an interrupt and let this all take place in the background. Okay, so <clears throat> let us take a look at some of the setup. Recall that uh, switch one is a single pull, single throw switch with its terminal connected to ground. Okay, this is on the launch board, launch pad board. This means a couple things. Number one, when you don't press it, uh, basically the input's floating. So we want to put a pull up resistor internal to the MCU, uh, just like we did before and have it be a pull up. <clears throat> and then when you press this button, it'll produce a zero. <clears throat> so that's what we want. So we want to start off by having uh, a high to low transition cause the LED to toggle. What's nice about that is that when the interrupt fires, it will instantaneously, well, not instantaneously, but very quickly fire, and it will implement or execute its interrupt service routine, but then, then it goes back into the main program. And it will not, you don't have to put any delay in there because it'll just sit in the main program until it's released. It doesn't even notice it's released. And then at some point later, it will get pressed again. So it happens very quickly right here. And then you don't have to worry about any, it's sitting in the polling loop or having to put delay or anything like that. <clears throat> so life is good if we can get this interrupt going, okay? We know that a button press will cause this to transition low. But the setting that we need to pay attention to when we configure the interrupt is the port interrupt uh, sensitivities, okay? The edge sensitivity. By default, this is a low to high transition out of reset. So we need to make sure that we want to set this bit corresponding to port four bit one to a high. And if we do that, that will get us sensitive to the high to low transition. So we got to make sure to remember to do that when when we set this up. Otherwise, someone would press it, the interrupt service routine wouldn't fire until they let go. And maybe we'll look at that too. <clears throat> okay, let's review what we are gonna do as the developer. First of all, we need to configure the peripheral. So we need to configure the port direction uh, for the LED and the switch. And we need to, for the switch, we need to put the pull up, pull down resistor. We need to enable that. We need to check or set its polarity to be a pull up on port four bit one. <clears throat> and then while we're doing that, we, we gotta put the sensitivity to the edge for the interrupt to be high to low. Once we clear the lock low power mode five bit, the peripherals, the digital IO, the port system will be enabled and we're off and running, except we have an enabled interrupt. So we gotta also prior to our main loop, enable the interrupt. And what we're gonna do is first clear the interrupt flag, even though the when it comes out of reset, it's clear, I'm gonna do it explicitly just so I know that it's at a zero, just to remind myself that this is an important thing. Then we're going to assert the local port enable bit, which is in the P, P port four interrupt enable register. <clears throat> and then since this is a maskable interrupt, we're gonna go ahead and set the GIE bit. And then we are off and almost running. Now, when we go to, uh, when we think about this, there was another register that we talked about. It was called the interrupt vector register. And remember, this one was a register that it helps us identify which bit within the port may have caused the interrupt if multiple go off. Since we're only using one bit, we know that if the vector or if the interrupt fires, it was due to the only bit we enabled, which is port four bit one. So we don't need to use this register. This is only for multiple registers. I don't use it very much anyway, but I just want to mention that because we covered it last time. Okay, once everything's going, we're just going to make a main loop that does nothing but jump main. And then we write our ISR. We'll write an ISR to toggle LED one. That's its functionality. But we got a few other things we got to remember to do. First and foremost, 
start the interrupt service routine with an address label. We're going to use that when we set up the vector table. We, in our interrupt service routine, we got to remember to clear the interrupt flag. So port 4 IFG bit 1, we got to clear that. Otherwise, we'll be stuck in this loop indefinitely. And then re remember, we are going to return with RETI, not RET. And what that's going to do is tell the CPU, I'm done with an interrupt service routine. Go ahead and pull both the program counter and the status register off the stack. The last thing we got to figure out is which vector is associated with this, this set of ports. It is port four is the class or the vector, <clears throat> and this handles any flag that is raised on any bit within port four, if they are enabled, okay? So we are only gonna enable bit position one, and that will cause it to go to this vector right here, FFCE, and that's where we need to store the starting address of our interrupt service routine. The CCS label is going to be dot int 22. That's going to be important later when we actually initialize the vector table because we need to go to that section and drop in a dot short of whatever our ISR label is. All right, let it, let's do it. Okay, so first of all, I got my MSP430 launchpad board plugged in and I'm going to go ahead and fire up a new project. So let's go fire new file. <laughs> Fire new CCS project, and we'll come in here and let's just make sure that got the right MCU. We're gonna come down here, and we're still in assembly, but we're doing IRQs now. So let's go port four S one. So it tells us it's a port four interrupt, and we're gonna read from switch one. We'll go ahead and do empty only. Alrighty, and we get ourselves a, a clear a new project. All right, let us go down here and start thinking about what we're doing. First and foremost, we got our main loop, okay? And let's let's put a label here called init, just to remind ourselves of all the stuff that we have to do. Okay, here we go. Let's set up the LED. So I'm gonna do bit set, uh, pound zero, or excuse me, bit zero of ampersand P1 DIR. What does this do? It sets port one, bit zero to output, and that is LED one, okay? Then we're gonna do, let's let's make sure the LED is off to begin with, okay? So we're gonna do this, we're gonna go bit clear dot B pound, bit zero of ampersand P1 uh, out, and that's gonna be clear LED one in the Shelly. Okay, I have now configured LED one, it's ready to go. Here we go, we're gonna do, Let's go ahead and bit four, let's do this. I'm gonna do set bit four bit one to input. And let's fix that little fella. <laughs> okay, to input, and that is switch one. So that'll remind me what I'm doing, okay? So I'm gonna do bit clear dot B, and I'm gonna use the, def the definition bit one. Okay, that's a mask. And that's going to be in port four DIR. Okay, so I have just now set that to an input, and that's where the switch one is. The next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and enable the pull up or pull down resistor. So I'm going to do a bit set dot B, and I'm going to go pound bit one, and this is now in the port four REN direction. So I'm going to do enable pull up or down resistor. Okay, and now let's make it an up. Okay, that's a pull up. So I'm gonna go bit set dot B, and I'm gonna go pound bit one, and I'm gonna go ampersand port four. Now this is the secondary function of the output, port four output register. Since it's an input, we may we use the P4 out register to, to configure whether the pull up resistor is an in pull up or pull down. So I'm gonna make, make the resistor a pull up. Okay, and now I'm gonna configure the interrupt edge sensitivity. So I'm gonna go bit set at B, and I'm gonna go pound one or bit one, whoops, bit one, and this is now in this register. P for uh, interrupt edge select. So we're gonna do sensitivity is high to low. Okay, at this moment, it's kind of nice to take a look at this and say, 
One thing that I really like here is that all of the masks are the same. Notice that they're all bit one, pound bit one. That is a real awesome thing because you can very quickly look at this and figure out if you've got the right mask, if you made a mistake. Also of importance is everything is port four. So port four DIR, port four REN, port four out, port four IES. This is awesome because you can, when you copy and paste code, sometimes you'll forget to update these, but you can really quickly look at this and say, oh, I'm doing the right thing here. Okay, now I just have configured everything, uh, except I got to turn on the digital IO. So I'm going to do bit, clear it up B, and remember this whole thing, lock LPM5, and that's going to be in in percent, power module 5, control 0, so that's going to be enable digital IO. Okay, <clears throat> might be some typos in here, that's all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, okay, now it is time to configure or enable the interrupt. So what I am going to do is I'm going to start like this. I'm going to do clear port for interrupt flag. And that's it. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to go bit clear. And once again, this is pound bit one. That's my def, my define I'm using. And this is now in the port for interrupt flag register. Okay, so that's how I clear the flag. And I'll, I'll copy and paste that into the interrupt service team when I need it. Again, this was probably optional because by default this flag was cleared, but I like to do it. It's just how I like it. All right, you ready to do it? The local enable? Bit set dot B pound bit one. And this is in the register P4IE. That is the enable. So let's go local enable for port four bit one. Okay. So I have now done the local enable. I am now ready to do the global enable. So I can do it two ways. So watch this. I can do it bit set up W. And I can go pound GIE in status register. That would work. I can also do it like this. I can just simply do uh, EINT. So that is enable, enable global maskables. <clears throat> okay. Remember, that's just for maskable interrupts. Okay. So I'm sitting here. And I'm feeling okay. I think I've got my initialization done. I've got my peripherals are configured. I've got my, I turned on the system. I cleared the flag and enabled the bit one, which is port four bit one. And now I can trigger an interrupt. And now I'm ready to do a main loop. And guess what we're gonna do? Nothing. We're gonna just go main jump me. <laughs> All right, now let's think about the next step. We need to write the interrupt service routines. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to grab myself a little uh, comment header and I want to make a little section right here. This is going to be still in program memory right after my main program. And I'm going to now label this little section of code interrupt service routine so I know exactly what I'm doing. All right, I am gonna name, give an address label to this, and I want to always want to make it really clear that it's an internet service routine. So I'm gonna go ISR, and then let's go S1. Okay, so I know that this is an interrupt service routine. What are we doing in the interrupt service routine? So this will only reach here if someone presses the button, right? And so it's like, okay, well that's fine. Uh, what are we? What's the whole point of it though? Well, actually what we are doing is we're toggling LED one. So I wanna do this, I wanna to go toggle LED one. And how do you toggle LED one? Well, you simply exclusive or it with a mask and that's uh, ampersand port one out and that's how I toggle it. That's all I need to do, except I got two little house cleaning things I gotta do. I need to clear the flag. Luckily I went ahead and copied it up here so I don't have to type it again. So I copy and paste that down there, boom. And now I'm done with the interrupt service team. I'm ready to return from an interrupt. So that's it, I just did it. Okay, there's one last piece to this. We need to define or enable, initialize the interrupt vector. Lo and behold, if I come down here, there's already a section called interrupt vectors and look at what's sitting in there. It is the reset vector. We finally understand what this code does. It is going to go to dot reset, which is a define for address FFFE, and it is going to go there and put 
whatever the contents of this address label reset is. You're like, where did reset come from? Well, look at this. If I go all the way to the beginning of my program, the first part after dot text, which is telling it to go to program memory, the first instruction, this little fella right here, has a label in front of it called reset. Even though this instruction is initializing the stack pointer, it, the label says this is where you're going to go to start executing code when you reset and start the MCU. And so this label is going to happen to be at 8,000. I know that because when you do dot text, it goes to the first address in program memory. But how we got that into the reset vector table or the vector table for reset was this little guy right here. So this is fantastic. So now we're sitting here and we're like, okay, well, how do I do this? I wanna also put this address label into the vector location for port four interrupts. Well, if you remember, dot sect, you do dot int 22. So that's how we had to uh, port four vector. Port four vector address is what we'll say. That's going to tell it, go down to whatever address you're, it is. I don't even need to know the hard-coded address anymore. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go dot short, and now I need to put in this label right here. And let's not even mess around. Let's copy, paste it. Boom. All right. This is feeling pretty good. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if we have any compilers. Go ahead and assemble this. A whole lot of stuff is happening. All right, so first and foremost, looks like it's downloading. Let's go ahead and let's just go for it. Let's run. So I'm gonna hit run, and now I come out to my board. And if I press port 4-bit 1, I should see LED 1 toggle. Oh, it worked. <laughs> Life is good. And, I, and it looks, look at that. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. Oh, look at that. And it's like, I can hold it down forever, nothing happens. I can do it really quick and it goes really fast. It is just the best button code ever. Okay, this is so cool. Now, let's take a look at a few of the things while we have this run in here. First of all, first of all, what would happen if I put a breakpoint in my interrupt service routine? And then I came in here and I debugged it. You should never actually, it shouldn't go into the interrupt service routine until you press the button, right? But this is kind of interesting because I can actually, if I was having trouble and I wanted to see if I, I ever actually got into the interrupt service routine, I could go ahead and run, and now it's sitting in the main loop. Run, 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 run. If I came over here and hit this, it's going to set the flag, and it's going to go get the address of where to go execute it, come into my interrupt service routine, and it's going to then break. So this is a really handy way once you, when you set up interrupts. One of the biggest things that happens when you try to set up these peripheral interrupts is they just won't fire. And you're like, how do I even debug it? Well, putting a breakpoint inside of the interrupt service routine is one good way to do it, okay? Let's look at one other thing while we're here, which is really fascinating. Uh, um, if I go look at um, the vector, FFCE is where the interrupt vector is for port four, okay? Let's go down, and I'm going to go to 8,000, okay? <clears throat> and I, I can see my, my program here. So I can see that, you know, where's the reset vector? Well, the reset vector was, uh, <clears throat> it's right over here. <clears throat> so the reset vector is uh, 8,000, okay? So if I say I want to, do, to initialize the reset vector to 8,000, if I go down to F, 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 E, look at what is that FFFE. It's address 8000. That is because this directive right here downloaded 8000 into this location. When I fired up, when I booted up, that was the address that was retrieved and put into the program counter so that I knew where to start executing code. Let's go check our interrupt vector and see it for our own eyes. First of all, let's go to 8000, our, our program. And I want to go look and see, what is the address for ISR1? So if I kind of scroll through here, I see like, okay, here's a bunch of opcodes, init, here's all the instructions for the init, right? So all these little bit, set and bit clairs. It looks like main is at 8030, and then ISR S1 is at 8032. 
So that is the address of our interrupt service routine. That was what I put into the interrupt vector table for int 22, okay? Now, if I wanna find that hard-coded address, I come out to this table, its, address, its vector address is FFCE. So if I go down to FFCE, okay, <clears throat> look at what is in there, 8032. So that is exactly what I wanted in there. That is the starting address of my interrupt service routine. And now here's an interesting thing too. Look at what the program counter is when I halted this. So I went from 8032. I'm in the interrupt service routine. Watch me step now. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. I'm going to step and it goes, oh, 8036. And then it's going to step again. I'm going to step again. And now I'm ready to return to the main program. The main program, it jumps up here. It is at 8030. So it's just going to sit here forever. Sit, 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 sit. And it will then only go down into the interrupt service routine once it retrieves the address 8032 from the vector table. <laughs> so it is working. We did it. Congratulations. You have now programmed your first interrupt, which was the port interrupt. And we did it. <laughs> okay, congratulations. And... As always, remember, support my channel by subscribing so I can continue to bring you these videos. See ya.